Welcome back everybody, Kathy Arbor here, and today is uh, water, or not watercolor, acrylic Thursday, <laughs> or mixed media Thursday. Uh, as you know, I love doing mixed media on most of my acrylic paintings. Um, I usually throw a little bit of mixed media in it, um, just because I like the effect or uh it is easier to get a certain effect so what i'm doing right now um we will be doing a painting but i have i it's march i can't believe it's march already so i'm just adding some of my pages here so february kind of slid by me like <laughs> I can't believe it. It uh, went by so fast. So I've got some um, squares here. And I thought I would just make little corner tucks for a lot of these paintings. Because you never know, maybe one day I would like to give this to somebody or sell it. Um, I think I'm going to bring you guys... a little better a little bit bright there so this was um a members uh blooming and budding artist uh stream and it was a video and you can uh get the traceable for this and paint along with the video and it's on my patreon and it's also in my youtube join button also if you're interested that was fun have a whole series of these little elves that I dream up, <laughs> basically. Hey, Zandra, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Is it a good day for you? It's a beautiful day here. It, um, you know how you get to a point where it feels like spring. That's the way I'm feeling today. So it was outside with the dogs and I could hear the blackbirds and chickadees and cardinals and they're all squawking like crazy. So it's got to be spring. They have already started to do the mating call. Hey Dot, good to see you. Hope you're doing well today. So I thought I would put these uh, little corners in. I just cut a square and then cut it in half. And then I can use them for just tucking the corners of my paintings instead of gluing them all into my um, page. So it's a place to store my paintings. Um, some I do directly on the on the file folder, but not all of them. Um, three, one more. Yeah, I see. It's being like soaring today too. Soaring? What do you mean? Hey, Judy. Good to see you all. So I wanted to, got a cute little spring type painting to do today. Spring gathering, it's called. It's a bunch of little animals that are finally coming out of hibernation and they're meeting up. <laughs> Have some Coyote pops out back, learning to yap. Moon, it's a oh really? Have you seen them, Judy, or you just hear them? Oh, been like spring, yeah. Well, I would imagine in the UK you get it much quicker than we do. 
Uh, although Sunday, I think they're predicting plus 11 here, which is, wow, double digit. But then, you know, the, it's Mother Nature playing very nasty um, games with us here in Canada. <laughs> so they're going to give us a little taste of, of spring weather. And then for the rest of the month, it's going to be horrible. <laughs> Snow, storms, cold what they predicted for the rest of March. So, oh well, I never really um, say it or expect too much out of March because it can be pretty uh, nasty at times. See, I want to do that. So kind of like that there. And then yeah. Kathleen, good to see you. So if you're a member to Patreon or my YouTube group, there is a uh, link for a traceable for you for this live stream. So if you're interested, you can go get it and paint along or you can just watch and try it later at your leisure. Right in the corner there. That. Hey, everybody. Good. Everyone's coming in. So the painting we're going to be doing is from the um, book Little Footprints by um, Carol Forsyth. And I have permission to use her patterns. I wonder if this is, uh, might not work. It's too, might be a bit tight. We'll see. Is it going to be tight? I think so. I might have to take this one up. Okay, we'll put this in first and then it a little bit lower. Like that. This one right up there. That should do it. All right. I'll put those away and use them for another one. Hey Janet, good to see you. And I have a little, oh, now I gotta change that one too. <laughs> Take 
it's not working. Let's see. Oh, I can just tuck it behind. That'll work. Like that. So this I've just made as a scrap piece of paper and then I can write things in it about the month. So I could add stuff to it. And then it's a tuck too. So that'll work. Um, I gotta put these guys in. I'm gonna probably have to make another one of these. So I can just slide stuff in there. These were done on the folders. Okay, so I'll have to put those in. Those are January. I don't know why. why well, actually, I do know why. February, I didn't have a, lo a lot of loose stuff. And I did jelly printing one um, Thursday. And I also did one in my art journal book. Um, last month, if you remember, we did this one, little penguins. So that turned out cute. I like it. Some napkins. So you can check out that video for last Thursday. It's getting there. Almost done this book. Um, so put that away for now or do I want to do it on here let's see could paint it right on here if I wanted to hmm so this is what we're doing this cute little guy it's a little footprints so we have the little um, hedgehog and two little chickadees and bees and beetles, some narcissus. And here's the traceable for you. I like the frame that they put around it too. You could do that with a stencil. So we could actually see it. We could actually paint this in a way that it takes up a little bit more than the one side. Um, so then you use part of this as the frame. That might look kind of cool. Maybe we'll do that. So we'll have part of the frame on here. So I haven't decided what, how much um, mixed media or if I am going to do any mixed media on this one. I could, but we'll see. But the first thing we have to do is make a background. So I think I'm going to stick to what she's done here. Which is kind of a uh, cream color or you could go buff. And then there's a little bit of um, either cerulean blue or aqua you could put in there too. A little bit of gray along the edge here. So I'm going to put on, actually it's almost the color of this background. So I, what I could do then is uh, make some matte medium with a little bit of blue and just put that on and call it done. <laughs> there we go. Hey, Brenda. So. We have matte medium. And I'm just going to use... Um, use this. I'm going to use the uh, Americana craft paint and some matte medium. Okay. 
Now you could do this in watercolor too. It'd be really cute. There's no um, rule that you can't do this in any other medium. So whatever is comfortable for you. You could even do pastels. Ink. I'm going to put some matte medium on there. And I have this blue, which is Indian turquoise, it's called, by Americana. It's probably a very old one. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can still get some of these colors. Just saying. And I want a fairly big brush. So I'm going to take this brush here. So it's a bristle brush. And I need some paper towels. So this is just a plain file folder. And I think let's take these out. And I think I'm going to put a piece of paper underneath so I don't mess anything up. Let's see. Um, wax paper, maybe? And So I don't mess this side up. We didn't want to do that. Um, maybe a better couple. Like that. Just over here for now. up a little bit. I have to take out just a smidge there. All right, so matte medium. Just because the um, color of the file folder is actually a good color. So why not use it? Save some paint. Use what you have. Um, you can change the color for your background to whatever you want. You don't have to stick with what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to take a little bit on my brush. A little more of that. And I'm just going to... I want it scratchy looking. It's a little bit blended. Got some on my shirt, of course. <laughs> and let's see, a little bit of gray also. Smidgen of gray there. Some more that medium. And just on the bottom here, I'm going to put some of that gray. And 
and just stuff the side. And I can take a, a baby wipe and just go across certain areas too if you want, if you want a little uh, less streakage just to soften some of that those lines just a bit. Doesn't take much, just a very light hand. And it just, uh, I'll bring this down a little bit so you can see it. And with your baby wipe, you can also add some if you want. I think I'm gonna leave it. And then uh, dry it. So you could put um, stenciling on here for the background too, would be really cool. Now you can do that before or after depending on um, the style of stenciling you want on there. How's everyone today? I was just telling everyone in the beginning that it feels like spring here. I know it's not going to be because they're calling for a very snowy, cold March because of the vortex, the Arctic vortex. It's going to be stalled out over Canada. <laughs> and then I guess uh, you guys in the States are going to get above seasonal warmth. And it's going to stay there for a while, so we're right on the border of both, and that's going to cause a lot of snow for us, storms. Rainy days, rainy, lazy days. Yep, those are the best. we have this and where did I just put that paper my just have to get my pricing paper where did I put it? I just had it out and now I don't know where it is. This one works. It's a little bit older, but it might show enough. We'll see. So, on the edge, but I want it positioned. Kind of 
kind of like that. So there's a little bit of a lip, so to speak. And I'm going to tape it down. Hey, Jen. All these old tapes. Guys, use your washi tape uh, because I find that when they get older, they're harder to peel, unfortunately. And I have a bunch of it, and I'm finding more and more that they're harder to use. And for some reason, the Tim Holtz ones are even worse. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Okay, so there. And there. And then I'm going to take a pen. and start drawing it up. So I have my background basically, so I can draw everything out that I have <clears throat> that's on this here. I'm just gonna draw this part here and then see if this tissue is any good. Because I have used it for a while. So it might be a little bit too used. Let's see. Nope, it's good. All right, we're on a roll now. So what have you guys been doing? I've been... Mm -hmm. Doing a lot of figuring, I guess. Um, planning, I guess you could say, for upcoming videos and member stuff. And thinking about my garden. What I'm going to be moving. I always move stuff in the spring. Most of the time. I did move some stuff in the fall. Um, but I do have a huge row of delphiniums that I grew from seed. And I have them in a, uh, I guess you could call it a nursery bed. <laughs> So I have to move those this year and put them somewhere in the garden before they get too big. These are Narcissus. I do have some narcissus or daffodils, whatever you want to call them. But we have so much snow on the ground still. We don't see the grass at all. Like there's got to be hmm, a foot and a half in the low lying areas. So it's going to be a, a little while before we see the flowers come up but they're good and protected under the snow so that's a positive thing to think about I guess uh, what do you love about a hedgehog what do I love about them um, 
I just think they're cute looking. Now, I probably wouldn't want to have one in my garden. <laughs> but, um, uh, I don't know how destructive they are in the garden. Because we, I don't know if we have hedgehogs, per se. We have, we have um, porcupines here. Big ones. They're, they do a lot of damage to trees, um, plants. So you don't really want to see any of those around your garden. But um, yeah, they're just cute looking. I know you, uh, in the UK they have them. I've seen them on different gardening shows talk about them. But yeah, we don't have, I don't think we have them here. Not that I've ever seen anyways. Maybe different parts of Canada might have them. But myself, I've never seen one. Um, working on scavenger hunt page. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's coming up soon. Got three more weeks, and or is it the end of April? I can't remember. Was it the beginning of April, or the end of April that they have to be done to enter the uh, draw? And what have you been doing as far as classes? Have you joined any or what do you, what do you like to see in a class? What do you like to learn? I know for a while there, um, portrait drawing and faces, that type of thing, whimsical um, faces were really, really big. Uh, I don't know how much, um, I don't see a whole lot of that anymore. I've joined, um, probably three. April 1st is a scavenger hunt uh, deadline on doing a page today too. Still have a lot. <laughs> you still have a lot. Yeah. What's that old saying? <laughs> the carpenter's kids go without, sh or the carpenter's house is never done or something like that, or the shoemaker's kids have no shoes. <laughs> so true. Uh, the cobbler's kid have no, yeah. The scavenger hunt wench is the last fish. Uh, I know, Janet. <laughs> I can remember when I had my stained glass door and I didn't have any stained glass in my house. For the longest time. And then finally I made. <clears throat> a couple lamps. But. Nothing like. Fancy windows or anything. I guess you just do so much. During the day. That's the last thing you want to be doing. When you get home.
Although I did do a, um, I remember I had a um, eating island from the kitchen to the dining room, and I made a countertop um, out of stained glass. Um, so that was that was really cool looking. Took a while because it was all small pieces. It was all mosaic. I made my own pattern, of course. Um, you should post photos of your stained glass. I'd love to see what you did. You know what? I don't have a whole lot. Back then, um, I don't know why. I just didn't take a lot of pictures. I had a few, but only as um, uh, stuff for my own um showing the process of how i did something but as far as small like big windows no i did i a lot of times they were too big you couldn't put them up in the store they had to be um professionally installed into the people's windows and i didn't do that somebody else did that but I, I don't know, I just never. Took pictures of them. Most and pretty well, most of the big windows that I did were were um, custom orders. Um, now that you can go and see the windows I did for the government um they're on display on in their um, building there's five of them great big ones three feet by five feet type of thing um i don't know if they're on i haven't looked i don't know if they're on um online or not i haven't looked Port Rowan um, Bird Studies Canada was where they are. They were um, for people that donated to the to the Bird Studies Canada got a window like their biggest donations. Type of thing and so Weston was one Johnson was another I can't remember all of them um, I still have a lot to Janet. oh you're doing the uh, <laughs> you're doing it too Jen just have fun with it <laughs> That's cool, Jen. Uh, I've been wanting to explain. Yeah, don't make it. I find don't make um, your practice of 
just um, enjoying drawing or arting or whatever it is that you do creatively, don't make it a um, scheduled task. You know what I mean? If it's for your enjoyment, don't make it something that you have to do. Make it something that you want to do. I found, I found that was the one thing about having a business in the stained glass business. Um, I loved it, but after a while, it's a business and you're no longer doing it for your own creativity. Um, you're doing it for somebody else, which kind of squashes your creativity as a growing artist, I find. I don't know if you guys think the same, but you know, once you got to make money out of it and it's your living, it's viewed a different way. I think I got it all now. Yep. All right. There we go. So I got her all put in there. I think you guys can see it. Uh, not too bad. So there's the picture. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, you can if you want. Or I do have the printable of this that you can download. It becomes uh, like having a cook dinner. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. No longer is fun anymore. <laughs> so when I'm looking at this, the thing I think about first is what is in the background. So we've done this part here. So looks like the birdhouse is the furthest thing back. Then the hedgehog. And we can do some of these um, flowers. And then the two birds will be the last thing. So this is a cute. Now... I'm just looking at this. Now, this could be just painted, or you could do this in paper. That might look, uh, actually look kind of cute. Now, if you have um, you could even paint different colors of paper. Let's see. How would I want to do this? I think I'm going to do the bottom part here with paint. And I think I might try using um, paper for the shingles. I think that would look really cute. Um, it'd have to be fairly thin because I don't want it to be built up too much. But we could spray some paint or inks on paper to use on the shingle. So let's do this first. Um, so it's kind of a greeny aqua. So this aqua color will probably do good for it. And a little bit of avocado also. 
Um, I'm just going to put some avocado here. And it looks like there's a little bit of sienna color in it. So I have burnt sienna because it's a little more on the um, red side. So a cinnamon color. If you don't have um, this in your arsenal, then just um, you can make some up. Kind of on a, a terracotta color, cinnamon, cinnamon color. Um, then I want to do a fairly. Uh, let's see. Let's check. I've got this brush here. It's a flat. It looks like about a half inch. It's a number ten. Towel. I didn't draw the lines, but that's fine. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, I think I need some umber too. Some raw umber. Ash Voltum will do just something kind of brownish black. A little more on the brown side, though. <laughs> yeah, who wouldn't? Everybody likes to do art instead of laundry. All right, I think I have my colors there. I still have some matte medium if I want to do any glazing. So what we want to do here, um, I think, do you want me to go in more? Because I'll show you, uh, I'm just doing this here. So there's the, No, we could do it in, I think I'm going to just paint it. Looks like it's kind of not real thick paint. Um, so I'm going to use some of this with a little bit of that matte medium. So it's more like a glaze. I'm just going to put in this color on the whole thing. Don't forget to do those little sections. I can still see through it, so I'm not worried about um, losing that narcissus. Because we're going to be uh, painting over a lot of this anyways again. So we can just put a, a light glazing over top. And there's that bit there. I think that's a bit there. All right. And then with a little bit of green on my brush and some glazing medium, I didn't clean my brush off. So I still have a little bit of aqua on there. Now I could. Uh, Start at the top here and just go down in strips. So I'm going to do one strip and then without cleaning my brush again, I'm going to dip a little bit more matte medium on my brush. Mix it in. And then I'm just going to dip the one side into that raw umber just to darken it and then I'm going to go back over 
and go down that side again. One more. Because I want a little bit of a darker edge in there. Like so. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush. Now we'll do that again. So a little bit more of the aqua. And I'm going to go beside it here. And down. So it doesn't have to be the same color. You can add a little bit of green to it. A little bit of that umber. And I'm going to go down. It's always on the left side that I put that darkness. There you go. So a little that, a little this. And we'll go down this side. I need a little more on there. A little more green. So it's kind of a different colors as you go. Do that again. Brush up. Let's dry that up and then we'll put another glaze of raw umber on there. So I just got a little bit of matte medium on my brush again and I'm dipping the one corner in, going back and forth. So I just want a little bit more of a color shadowed area. So and we're just going to go down. Just 
just keep it on the one side. More matte medium. Which one was it there? And a little bit there. And we have a couple um, cross member boards, shorter boards, I guess. So you can put those in too. So we have one here, roughly. And maybe one here. One up here. Mm, let's put one here. You can put as many as you want in there. One here. Hey, Kristen. Hello, good to see you. All right, and then I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow while I'm thinking of it. So I'm putting uh, more matte medium on my brush, dipping the corner in again. And there's a bit of a shadow on the bottom of, or the top of this. Maybe a little bit more on my brush, a little more matte medium. Let's go back over it. And we can make it a, actually a little bit wider, I think. So just add a little bit more to the brush. All right, and then um, you can take a little stylus or toothpick or whatever you got with a, sh a sharp point to it. And then we can put some dots for um, like nails, nail holes. So they don't have to be big or whatever you want. Uh, like and now I want a small brush uh, around Bethel. So let's see. Let's see on. I can find one. A whole lot of sorry, guys. There. And I'm going to just take some of that dark green. And maybe a little bit of a, like a dark color, a little bit of umber with it. 
I want it fairly dark for the shadowed areas and in between the um, shingles. can put those in. I think that's good. All right. Now, what could we do? I'm just thinking, what do I want to do for these shingles? Do I want to paint them or do we put paper? What do you guys think? What would you like to see me do? Paper or painting them? Paper, all right. Um, now, I'm probably gonna paint a piece of paper, like spray it with, I don't know, inks or whatever. And then, or do you want me to use scrapbook paper? If I do scrapbook paper, then I'm gonna have to find a piece of paper. So it has to be fairly um, thin. Can't be too thick. I could probably find. Um, let me think. I don't know you want something. Um, Oh, we'll do some sprays. What the heck? Okay, so I got a bunch of Lindy sprays, so we'll we'll <laughs> do some sprays. So let's see. Uh, we want kind of rusty colors. So here's Moon Shadow. What's this one? Uh, crow's Nest Copper. Hmm. Cocoa bean, copper. Let's see. Brown. Do I have any brown in here? Let's see. There's brown. And maybe a smidgen of aqua color. Why not? And maybe some orange. All right, so I just put that up there. I'm going to move this for now so I don't spray it. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if I did. And just a piece of, oh, my big roll of paper. <laughs> Why not? Hopefully these work. Now you could use whatever sprays you want. Kathy, whatever works for you, dear. <laughs> so just shaking these up. Okay, so we'll just spray on a bunch. Well, that one's not going to work, obviously. So let's just throw some on. I 
let's brighten this up a little bit. There. Some of this. Some brown. And that. I'm going to put some more of this on. Maybe a little bit more coppery. Um, some red. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Striking out with the, some of these, but I gotta clean them. Okay, so. Okay, let's try it. Have shimmer. All right, let's see what else we can do. How dark do we want? Let's take a look. Well, that's going to be pretty good. So this, yeah, that color is going to match pretty good. All right, so we want to What I'm thinking is we have one, two, three, four layers. So we want to do four strips. Each strip gets shorter. So we don't cut small strips. We want to cut long strips. So um, I 
basically I'm just going to put this uh, pattern back on here. I think I'm going to hmm I will start off here. So if we put that there in my tracing sheet wherever I put that And I'm going to trace four of these. Now you, uh, or actually one, just a minute. Um, pen. Okay. So I'm going to trace four. I'm um, just going to go like this, I think. The bottom one. So I'm not going to cut out every single little shingle. I'm going to cut it in strips. All right. I can't really see it too well. So let's take a I'm just going to trace some of this out so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay, so what I can do is fold it, fold it again. And then I'll cut it out. And it should work. I'm just cutting the outer edge right now. Because I don't want to take it all apart yet until I get this outer edge done. Okay. Now I can cut the bottom.
All right. Well, I just thought of something. Eh, it might work. <laughs> that two backwards. So we could use this one. On the bottom. Like this. And then you could just keep going up. And you just shorten each one you do. Okay, wait a minute. They're different. Okay. So I'm going to put that one down first. So I can fix the others. So that one's going to go down like that. And then the next one has got a different row. So I'm just going to put these together. It might be a little different, but it should still work. And I'm going to cut that off now because we have that one layer down. So that can go down. I'm working this out as I go, guys. So <laughs> best watch me first so I can make all the mistakes and then you can learn. Okay, so that can now go on there like that. And then take my paper. And I can just trace this for the next two. So I want the next row, basically. Just make sure you got it on right. Actually, I'm going to see if this goes... I can see it. If it scores it through or not. No. Okay, I'm gonna have I'm gonna take my pencil. Or if you have a piece of pastel, soft pastel. You could do this too. I just want the edge so I can put that on this part. I might have, I might be doing this the long way if somebody else has some better ideas on how to do this. Put it in the comments. Okay, so there it goes. So I can cut this out now.
Uh, snagging him in the pant leg. <laughs> okay. So then that guy. Okay, he goes there. This guy goes there. This one goes up here, like that. And one more. So I'm going to take that back down. This one. I got the wrong way. It's more. There and my pen. Draw the other one up. And I can cut that out. And that's the top row. And then you can glue them down. Now you can glue them right down or you could have them so that they're raised slightly. This is very thin paper so it depends on uh, where you're putting it. If you don't mind a lot of bulk in your book then go ahead and do whatever you want. Okay so this one goes like that. That one goes like that and then this one goes like that huh all right so now you could either um color the edges of these with um a fine brush so i could take um, some of this spray, actually. Ink. Oh, thanks, Judy. So I have some ink here. And I could just go along the edges of this. It just darkens it a little bit. You could use um, inks if you wanted to. Let's darken this one too a little bit. Uh -oh. Just a smidge. All right, so now I'm going to take a brush and some matte medium. And right at the top here, and there, I'm not going to do the um, very bottom though. I'm going to leave that. Okay, let's just put that on. Like that. Next one. I'm not 
glue on the bottom, just the uh, top part. Put it up to the top again. Like that. Next. And the very top. There, so. <laughs> yeah, I always like a challenge. I love challenges. It's always fun to do. You never know, you know, sometimes you hum and haw about doing something because it might you don't know how it's going to turn out or you know there's it's it's a possible fail or whatever but if you don't do it you'll never know right and so a lot of times those are the best ideas there so you got Cute little house, bird house. Okay, now we can do the top part here. So it's kind of a mm, raw umber, a little bit of sienna in it. And where's that book? Oh, it. Okay, so it's kind of light on the bottom part. I think I need a little more umber in there. I don't mind the lines because it's wood. So it just gives it a little bit more texture. Like that. And I'm gonna get my other just to do the spindles. And then we'll highlight them. So this is just the base coat. It's always good to have a second traceable just in case you lose some of the um, line work and you're not sure what to do. Okay, so I can take some of this raw umber and um, actually I think I'll take my flat brush and we'll put some shading again. So some of that matte medium on your brush again. And a little bit of umber on the bottom. Okay. 
And we can go just under. These here. Just darken them. Right underneath those uh, little shingles. Like so, and then with a smaller brush, you can go in between some of the shingles too. So I've got this uh, liner brush here. And up in the very top of that V is the darkest area. And then down the left side, You can just put some more under, under the bottom if there's not enough shadow. And you can do that to all of them. So wherever that V on the top is, make that the darkest area. And then the left side, bring it down. If you have Poscas, you could use those too. You don't want to use your liner brush. Put there. Any of them bottom, put that on if it needs to be darker. Like that. Bye Z, thanks for coming. And there's a definite shadow. We need to take the wider flat, more matte medium on it, tip it in. And then right on the top part here, there's a shadow. Like that. Okay, now I need a little bit of white, or if you have cream, you could use cream too, because I want to make a little bit of a lighter color of um, this color we put the sienna and the umber together. Now just add a touch of white to a little bit. Make a lighter shade, kind of a creamy color. And then I want you to go on the bottom part of this. It needs to be a little whiter. I don't want it white, but I do want it lighter to be noticeable. Like that.
And then we can take the dark umber. And then there's a shadow on this part here, just above that area we just put on. Make sure that your um, brush is not too dry, but not too wet. But you want it to flow off here. See, this isn't needs to be a little wetter. It needs to flow off your um, brush properly. Okay. And a little bit on here, just on the edge. Oop, too much water. And then I'm just taking it a little bit of water on my brush and just going above that line we just put on. And that just kind of blends those that area in a little bit, but lightens it. And then I want you to take that mix again, that used lighter mix. And then kind of in this upper middle, just do a line along the edge. Maybe a little bit lighter. Try it again. Cheeky hands. Can fix it though. A little bit of this and put it back on. Here we go. All right, let's see. I think we need a little bit of shading in here, just along the edge. That. And now we want to take some of that lighter color and add a little bit less um, white to it. And then I want to just go in the center of these, this ball. Leave some of the dark. Look at your reference for what it looks like. Like that. And then the same thing we could do to this one, a little bit darker on the bottom part here. That. A little bit of that light. In the center. And the light again, just a dab in the center of that other circle.
All right, and then let's see, what else can we do here? I think that's almost done. So I'm gonna let that dry. So now we need to do the little porcupine guy. Um, now, the porcupine, or hedgehog, I should say, uh, you have to look at the base. What's underneath all these little quills? So the color is fairly dark, uh, more on the darker side, like this side here. Going into a little bit of gray, too. But we'll put this down first. So, um, on the main part of his body. And I'm not going to go outside the quill. I'm going to kind of stay a little bit inwards. Um, I'm going to go around the ear. And the face is kind of a grayish white. So I'm not going to go into the face. So it's kind of blotchy looking in a way but uh, he does have a little bit on his nose so right here and it's it is um shown in the drawing uh under his eye there that down to his nose And a little bit, a little bit underneath here, just a smidge. that and right here not much though okay and then kind of a gray so you're going to want to get a black and mix a little bit of white or let's see what we've got here green Let's see if I got black. Green's gray. Black green. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, I got some black. A little bit of black. blacker kind of looks blue to a bit blue kind of clumpy gonna have to use that up soon it's getting clumpy um now if you have a rake brush or a grainer brush is another word for it or a really stiff bristle brush um is what you're going to want to use for this part. Okay, so I have a grainer brush here. Actually, I want to put the gray in first. So I'm going to take some of this white, a little bit of black, just a smidge of black, because 
don't want it too dark. Kind of want a medium gray color. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go in with the gray, put a base coat of gray in here. This tummy here. Like that. And a little bit darker in his ear. Just a smidgen darker. can take that small brush. I'm just going to put his mm, eyes in and his nose for now. So just black. So his eye is here. And the other one is kind of oval shaped air. And then his little nose. Like that. Now we have the greener. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start with a kind of a mix of sienna and uh, raw umber. So dark first, and then we're going to work from the back towards his nose. And we're going to keep also keep in mind the direction of the quills how they're so they're not going just one way they're going towards his nose in a fan shape almost i guess i could leave this here so we want some umber a little bit of sienna um get a little bit more this just so that it's a little easier to spread okay so we start from the back now we don't want a lot on your brush because then you'll lose the uh, um. oh you're stitching awesome and you just start by putting those little lines in along the edge. Thank you. 
Okay. I just I think I need a little bit of black in there. It needs to be a little bit darker. I'm going to add a little bit of black in that brown. Mix it with the matte medium. That's better. Okay, let's do it again. That's better. It's a little bit darker. Now, if you want to, you could do this with um, a liner brush, too, if you don't have one of these. Or Posca. It's going to take a little longer, but it is doable. Okay, so now I want to work my way down to the nose. But I don't want to cover it completely. Well, these do take a little bit of time. So just have fun with it. Hmm. A bit too much on my brush. Don't worry if that happens because you're going to be covering with more layers. So you can always go back and put more on. He just has a few on his little muzzle. Not a lot. Take it into the gray area. Sweeping in the right direction, though. Just got to remember that. Look at your reference. Uh, photo or not photo um, line drawing there's a little bit in here separating his ear and his neck I guess like that down in here I'm going into into the gray area with this dark. And just on the very edge here, a little bit, not much, just a bit. And let's see, goes around here a bit. Uh, okay. Okay, so now we can um, lighten this with a little bit of white.
and do the same thing. This time, um, not as much, just here and there. You can always go back and put more in a certain color if you find there it's not quite right. It's kind of a back and forth type of thing. And then I'm going to, almost a gray, I guess I want. A light, light gray. I don't want black or a white that would be too stark. But a gray would be nice. So let's get the right gray. And you do the same thing. Make sure there's not too much on your brush though. And really pay attention to which way your quills are going. A little bit in his face, too. Okay, and go back to the brown again. Fix up some of those areas that are a little bit too blotchy. Or might have too much of one color in it. I think I need a little bit in here. Right here. Now, I'm going to take some cream color. And I think actually I'm going to use, I want something a little bit of a more precise because this let's see if this is going to work I might end up using I 
Uh, it's not bad. It's just tough to be very light-handed. Just do some very, this is a like, what is this? 10 slash zero brush. So it's very, very small. You have to be very light handed. You could do it with a Posca too. But if you don't have a Posca, I don't know, try this. Just try not to make them too big, but you can always go back and, and paint those areas back out if, it, if they're too big. I'm gonna try the Posca. See if I have a cream colored one. I should. Um, cream. It's not a Posca, but hopefully it will work. Maybe not. Nope, that one's a dud. That's not good. Let's see. I thought for sure I had a Posca in it. Just a minute. Nope. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm going to have to stick with the smaller brush. Uh, let me see if I got... A really fine one here. Let's so let's see how this one works. Might have to go with um, that's a little better. You just have to take your time. These are the um, more detailed areas. The, the cream, I guess that's the end of their quills or something. So they're a little thicker looking. More defined. You just have to use the right amount of pressure so you don't get too thick of a, a mark. And just, again, watch your direction of the, of the quill. You don't want them... You want them natural looking, not um, little soldiers. Let's see, does he have, okay, so basically comes down and kind of stops, about those big ones stop.
Okay. Thanks, Judy. Now I'm going to take some of this gray again. Lighter with this greener brush. And just do the eyes. And the eyes no, still has to be lighter. The eyes... Um, it kind of grows outward from the eye. Fuzzy. Takes a while to get used to the greener brush, but once you get the right consistency, they work great. You just have to play with them for a bit. And his nose here, just little ones, little dabs. Kind of almost dry brushed. Um, few in here. And then in that here, sweep it over the brown area. I'm just using white now. It just seems to do a little better. I'm not going to cover the all the gray up though. Just I'm just putting some streaks in it. Keeping in mind how the um, little, I don't know if they're quills under there or these are fur. I don't know anything about these guys, but they're cute. I have to put some more gray in here too. water on my brush. More in there.
Um, a bit more in here, I think. A little longer. Buzz into his ears a, a little bit more. Like that. And then a little bit of brown, I guess. to be a little bit more white in here goes around his eye And a little bit on his tops of his ears, fuzzies. take my small brush here and some of that black actually I think I'll use a marker if you, if you can use something that's going to be easier use it that's the way I look at things um, All right, have a good lunch, Judy. Thanks for coming. Hmm, that's not a very good. Nope. May as well throw it out. No point in keeping it. Uh, I know I have a fine line Posca somewhere. Hmm. His nose kind of has a line. His nostrils. pen Put 
whiskers in. And a dot for highlight of white. Oop, too much water. bit of highlight on his nose. Um, it's more dry brushed I guess. Just a little bit of highlight right there on his nose. And he's got a little bit of a beard here. And I think that's good. All right, there's the little hedgehog. <laughs> now, these, um, Narcissus, I think we'll do the stems, kind of keep the same green. So I'm going to take the round, or not round, the uh, flat. Hopefully there's enough here. Yep. So a little bit of that green, a little bit of the turquoise. And you can just make the leaves by making a, um, I've got kind of a mix on my brush. you get different looks. You could even add a little bit of cream if you wanted to. Very, very, just a uh, real simple. I'm not really going all out in um, photorealism type of, it's more of a folk art or um, decorative painting style, I guess you could say. A little of this, a little of that. Just mix it up. Let's see what we got here. Uh. 
I'm just going to go right over this. I can put his feet in later. Um, add as many as you want. You can add more. Um, not all of these are in there, but play with it. Okay, and that one is there. You can always add more too, um, if you want. Okay, so there's a little bit of a brown-ish color right here. It's kind of the um, flower. Paper from the bud. Um, where else do we have some, some of these? I don't know what they're supposed to be, but in this here. Kind of a Papery look thing. Um, what else? It's here. It's, uh, some of that paper stuff. So, put some there. So we can um, play with this more. Our detail brushes. We, you could also, if you don't want to do a lot of detail with paint, you could always use um, colored pencil too. Okay, so let's do some of these um, narcissus. Let's do a filbert. So these are kind of kind of a greenish color, um, I guess because they're a little bit in the white family. Another paper towel. We're going to get, where did I put that? Oh, there it is. So if this is more I'm just going to paint them. I think I'm just going to go in and paint this with this um, cream color for now. And then I'll go in with um, shadows and highlights. And this thing, this um, center bit is um, kind of a pinky color. Now this isn't the greatest paint because I can still see my drawing underneath it. So that's kind of a bummer. I wonder if I can erase. So 
some of that. Let's see. Eraser. Where did I put that? Hmm. Shoot, I don't know where I put my eraser. Let's see if this will come. Mm, a little bit. Not much, though. All right, I guess we'll have to uh, work with it. So I'm just going to paint in the pebbles with this um, buttermilk or whatever it's called. What is it called? Uh, light ivory. So I might have to go with a couple coats. We'll see. And I'm going to have a little bit of um, brush mark from the paint. I'm going to work with that as part of the lines in the petal. Paints uh, fairly thick in these here. It should work. Oh, that one there. It's on the side. that um, and this one here bud I'm gonna just put a little bit more on this one here I didn't have it quite as as um, thick that. So let's dry those. I 
And while that's drying, I'm going to use the um, some pink. This one is called Pink Quartz. So it's not a bright pink. It's kind of a little bit on the dusty side. I'm going to have to use another container. And Just fill in the pink areas and then we'll go back and do the highlights, shadows. I might need a little bit more. painting on them. Pinks, um, yellow, red. They tend to be a little bit on the transparent side. Let's dry that. I can probably go back under or over, sorry. Um, where did I put that? With the cream color. And just cover some of that really dark line work. And then I can um, go back over it with highlights and shadows. So don't worry about the line work, not being able to see it. You have your um, traceable 
that you can refer to. I forgot one. Okay. Hmm. Right. And where else? Here we go. Not in there. That should do it for that, and then we'll go over the pink also. So you want the pink fairly opaque also. That should do it. So it looks kind of weird right now, but once you um, put all the details on, details are always the last thing that just makes the thing come alive. All right, so now I um, want a little bit of a darker pink, or almost burgundy, I guess you could say. That'd be the best. If you have colored pencils, you could use those. Um, let's see. Maybe I'll use colored pencils so I can show you how easy it is to work with that. So we want kind of a burgundy color. So burgundy color. And now we want to look at 
where the shadows are. So in this one, it's kind of along the edge here. And just lightly take it out. So there's a little bit of um, and there's kind of lines coming out. And then Right in here is the opening. And in there would be a little bit darker, but just along the edge of the inside there. And then they're kind of fluted, I guess you could say. A little bit along the edge, not too close to that dark area though. And then you can take a lighter color and there's highlights in between here. Oh, that's a, it's actually not supposed to be in there. So light, lighter areas in, in the center here because it's kind of rounded and right along the edge here on the top part. Would be lighter. I'm going to take, let's see if I can find a pink similar to that. Uh, maybe this one. Nope. A little bit in here. That one. More on the blue side. You know, let's see what that does. That's not bad. I still want something lighter though. Lighter than that. Um, but pink. And more on... Okay, 
my back. So this is shadowed again. Those lines. And a little bit on the lower third, I guess you could say. Some light areas. I'm just um, blending this into the paint. I'm going to get a little bit of a lighter color. Maybe. That's not any lighter. White or cream. I think I need white. I might have to go in with a um, marker. Some of this is take, taking the um, pencil for some reason. Not sure why. Yeah, I'm back. Oh, glitch. <laughs> what else is new? This one. Bit of a shade in here. We still have those, um, lines a little bit of a shadow in the center like that White. Let's see how that how it works on this part. And a little bit on the edge. Kind of hard to get some of that in there. Working on a center a fold. All right, and then this one, a little bit of shadow.
blend it in. And a little bit of a highlight here. Uh, that one's not doing it. It's funny how some, maybe it might, it's the matte medium, I don't know. We'll have to just highlight some of those. Um, one more. Now, if I had been with on um, YouTube, I would have been gone. <laughs> so I guess that's one good thing about StreamYard is you can come back on the same same one. Okay, so let's take a highlight. one. Put some highlights on these. So I'm just gonna tab. This one. So highlight. So just highlighting in between, I know on the rises of the ruffle. Maybe a little in there on the lip. here all right well guys i gotta go uh i know it's not done i think what i'll do is i'll finish it next week and then you'll be able to see what i do there's lots of details i have to get to and i haven't done these birds and my son's going to work so i gotta take care of the dogs so I will let you guys go and we'll see you back on next Thursday and we'll finish this up and we'll do a whole lot more um, detail with pens and markers. All right, so I'll let you guys go and you guys have a fantastic weekend. Get creative somehow, sewing, art, whatever. Thanks, Dot. You have a fantastic uh, weekend.
I hope your weather is great. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Bye for now.